What is up guys? It's your boy Potpourri Facts back with another video. Today we're diving deep into the weird world of phobias. We're talking about the kind of fears that make you go, wait, people are actually afraid of that? Welcome to our countdown of the strangest phobias you never knew people actually have. Let's dive right in. First up, we've got a fear that's both relatable and kind of strange. Arachi butyrophobia, the fear of peanut butter sticking to the roof of your mouth. I mean, we've all been there, right? That sticky, dry feeling, it's like your mouth is glued shut and no amount of water seems to help, but for some people, it's a full-blown phobia. The mere sight of peanut butter can send them into a panic. They avoid peanut butter like it's the plague. No peanut butter sandwiches, no peanut butter cookies, nothing. Imagine having to skip out on PB&Js, peanut butter cups, all that good stuff. It's not just about missing out on a favorite snack, it's about the anxiety and fear that comes with it. This phobia is often linked to a fear of choking, which makes sense, but still, it's pretty wild. The fear can be so intense that it affects their daily life. They might even go to great lengths to ensure they don't accidentally consume anything with peanut butter. Checking labels, asking about ingredients, and avoiding certain restaurants altogether. Like many phobias, Iraqi butyrophobia can be managed with therapy and support. Cognitive behavioral therapy, in particular, has been shown to be effective in helping people overcome their fears. With gradual exposure and the right techniques, some people can learn to manage their fear and even enjoy peanut butter again. It's a journey, but it's possible. So the next time you enjoy a peanut butter treat, spare a thought for those who can't. And remember, phobias, no matter how unusual, are very real and can be overcome with the right help. It's all about understanding and support. Whether it's Arachi butyrophobia or any other fear, empathy goes a long way. So here's to facing our fears, one spoonful at a time. Next up is a phobia that's becoming more and more common in our digital age. Nomophobia, the fear of being without your mobile phone. This isn't just a mild inconvenience or a slight annoyance, it's a full-blown, heart-pounding fear that can grip you when you realize your phone isn't within reach. Imagine the sheer panic that sets in when you can't find your phone, the device that has become almost an extension of yourself. And I'm not talking about just disliking being without your phone, I'm talking about a deep-seated fear that can lead to significant anxiety and distress. For some, the thought of being disconnected from their phone is akin to being cut off from the world. It's not just about missing a call or a text, it's about losing access to social media, emails, and the constant stream of information that we have become so accustomed to. I'm talking full-on panic attacks, anxiety, the works. People with nomophobia can experience symptoms similar to those of other anxiety disorders. This can include sweating, trembling, and even hyperventilating. The fear can be so intense that it disrupts daily life, making it difficult to focus on anything other than the absence of their phone. Imagine leaving your phone at home and feeling like you've lost a limb. It's not just a metaphor. For many, their phone is an essential part of their daily routine. It's their connection to the world, their source of entertainment, and their tool for managing daily tasks. Without it, they feel incomplete, vulnerable, and isolated. This phobia is often linked to our dependence on technology, FOMO, and the constant need to be connected. Fear of missing out or FOMO drives many to constantly check their phones for updates, messages, and notifications. This constant need to stay connected can create a cycle of anxiety and dependence, where the phone becomes a security blanket that people can't live without, and the constant need to be connected. In today's world, being without a phone can feel like being cut off from society. It's not just about missing out on social interactions, it's about losing access to information, navigation, and even safety. For many, their phone is their lifeline, and being without it can trigger intense feelings of fear and anxiety. It's a real thing, guys, and it's affecting a lot of people. Nomophobia is more than just a quirky term. It's a serious issue that reflects our growing dependence on technology. As we continue to integrate our lives with our devices, it's important to recognize the impact this has on our mental health. Understanding nomophobia is the first step in addressing it and finding ways to manage our relationship with technology in a healthier way. This one's for all you color lovers out there. Xanthophobia, the fear of the color yellow. That's right, the color of sunshine, lemons, and big bird. People with this phobia might avoid anything yellow, from clothing to flowers to, well, bananas. Can you imagine living in a world without the color yellow? It's a real thing and it can be pretty debilitating for those who have it. 
Okay, this next one is for all my cheese lovers out there. You might find it hard to believe, but there are people who can't stand the sight, smell, or even the thought of cheese. Yes, you heard that right. Turophobia, the fear of cheese, is a real and often debilitating condition for those who suffer from it. I know, I know, it sounds crazy, but imagine living in a world where cheese is everywhere, and you can't escape it. Who could be afraid of cheese? It's such a beloved food item featured in so many dishes and enjoyed by millions. But for some people, even the sight or smell of cheese can trigger intense feelings of anxiety and disgust. It's not just a mild dislike, it's a full-blown phobia. Imagine having to skip pizza night, grilled cheese sandwiches, cheeseburgers, the list goes on. These are comfort foods for many, but for someone with turophobia, they're sources of stress and fear. This phobia can stem from a variety of factors, including psychological and emotional triggers. One possible cause is a traumatic experience with cheese, such as choking on it or getting sick after eating it. Another factor could be a general aversion to dairy products, which might be linked to lactose intolerance or a bad reaction to dairy in the past. Understanding turophobia requires delving into the psychology of fear and how our brains can associate certain foods with negative experiences. For those who suffer from this phobia, it's important to seek support and understanding from friends and family. It's not just a quirky dislike, it's a serious condition that can impact daily life. Creating a supportive environment can make a big difference. Offering cheese-free options at gatherings and being mindful of their condition can help them feel more comfortable. Treatment for turophobia often involves therapy, such as cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT, or exposure therapy, where the person is gradually exposed to cheese in a controlled and safe manner. With time and the right support, many people can learn to manage their fear and even overcome it. It's a journey, but it's possible. So the next time you meet someone who can't stand cheese, remember that it's more than just a preference. It's a real phobia that deserves empathy and understanding. And who knows, with the right support, they might just join you for pizza night someday. Until then, let's be kind and supportive to those with turophobia. After all, Everyone deserves to feel comfortable and included, no matter their fears. This one hits close to home for some of you, I'm sure. Ombrophobia, the fear of rain. Now, I get it, nobody likes getting caught in a downpour. But for people with ombrophobia, it's a whole other level of fear. They might avoid going outside when it's raining and even the sound of rain can trigger anxiety. This phobia can be linked to a fear of thunderstorms, getting wet, or even the smell of rain. All right, gentlemen, this one's for you, or rather, against you. Poganophobia, the fear of beards. That's right, some people out there get seriously freaked out by facial hair. It can be a fear of all beards or just certain styles, and it can stem from a variety of factors including personal experiences or cultural influences. Imagine being afraid of Santa Claus. This phobia is real, and it can have a real impact on people's lives. This next one is a bit different. Tripophobia. The fear of clusters of small holes. Think honeycombs, lotus seed pods, or even a sponge. For people with trypophobia, these patterns can trigger feelings of disgust, fear, or even skin crawling. It's a relatively common phobia, and while it's not officially recognized as a mental disorder, it can still be pretty distressing for those who experience it. This one's for all you party animals out there. Globophobia, the fear of balloons, yeah, you heard that right. Those colorful, bouncy symbols of joy and celebration? Terrifying for some people. The fear often stems from the sound of balloons popping which can be startling and unexpected. Imagine having to avoid birthday parties, carnivals, and any event with balloons. Get ready for a mouthful with this one. Hippopotamonstrosi squipedeliophobia, the fear of long words. Ironic, right? People with this phobia might struggle to read, write, or even pronounce long words. Can you imagine the struggle of even saying the name of this phobia? It's real and it can make communication pretty challenging. And last but not least we have ephibophobia, the fear of teenagers. Okay I get it, teenagers can be a handful sometimes. But for people with ephibophobia it goes beyond just finding teenagers annoying. They might avoid places where teenagers hang out, and even interacting with teenagers can trigger anxiety. This phobia can stem from a variety of factors, including negative past experiences or a general fear of youthful rebellion. So there you have it guys, 10 of the strangest phobias you never knew people actually had. 
From the fear of peanut butter sticking to the roof of your mouth to the fear of long words, the human mind is a strange and wonderful thing. What did you guys think? Type no more in the comments if you're ready to crush it this week. Follow for more.